Charlie. Mark, one Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm full of optimism. Einstein's theory of relativity. We're still seeing it quite well through that haze. He might have 37 seconds. Fight the green continent. E equals MC. That all men are created equal. About the future innovation. And growing strength in the air. This is Finding Your Frequency with your hosts, Jeff Spinard and Ryan Treasure. It's time to speak up, share your voice, and hear from the thought leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another fantastic episode of Finding Your Frequency. I'm your host, Ryan Treasure. And of course, we're joined here today with a fantastic guest. But before we get to the guests, I want to remind everybody, you know, as you guys are out there dealing with the COVID-19, the uh, uh, pandemic that's going on, you know, there's going to be some opportunity, I think, that's going to open up as the economy gets kickstarted and 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 gets back into action i know uh today is the day that we're recording this just yesterday here in arizona they're allowing uh you know uh, stores to open up a little bit they're allowing barber shops and gyms and uh, restaurants with social distancing guidelines put in place to open up so uh, kind of seeing the beginning of things reopening as it relates to the covid19 pandemic and all that madness that we've all been dealing with i know everybody's at my house is a extremely stir crazy especially my six-year-old she's been you know cooped up in the house for what seems like almost uh, two and a half months since school ended uh and of course they're doing distance learning but uh with the distance learning she's already done all the homework already uh you know my wife's working from home i'm still commuting back and forth to the studio and uh things are just different uh and i think also when you think about the economy and things getting kick-started and back online uh there's going to be some jobs, right? There's a lot of people that were furloughed, a lot of people that, uh, you know, don't have jobs currently. Uh, a lot of those employers will probably be calling their employees back to get them back into the swing of things. But I also have a sneaking suspicion when the government is giving you $600 a week on top of your other unemployment, you may be making more money on unemployment. So is that going to cause people to stay home and not get jobs? And so that's kind of uh, uh, some of the topic matter today as we talk about getting jobs and setting yourself apart. Uh, as the economy gets kickstarted, uh, you know, everybody needs to have a fantastic resume. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, we're also talk to uh, Matthew Warzel, who's a resume writer, a career coach, uh, and an outplacement expert with 15 years in human resource and career advancement techniques. Welcome to the show, Matthew. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, you know, as I was kind of uh, discussing in the beginning, um, you know, it's kind of like you have this shift that's happening with uh, the pandemic. A lot of people were, you know, uh, not working. I know that here in Arizona, we have like 575,000 people that are on unemployment, you know, so we have this huge pool of workforce of people who are going to be wanting to get back to work. And I think it's really important, right, that when this stuff all gets back in order, uh, you know, some of those folks may not go back to the same job they had. They might be looking for, um, you know, a different job or uh, a, the same job at a different place for uh, more money. Uh, so I think there's a a lot of opportunity that's going to be coming out. What are your thoughts? Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, first and foremost, no matter what, um, you know, catastrophe, catastrophe that we encounter, whether it be a, you know, something like the COVID or, or a financial meltdown. Um, I know personally that people still hire. I mean, uh, as a former recruiter for, for five, 10 years, you know, going through some of these, um, these issues uh, on a nationwide front, um, yeah, sure. There's some pullback on hiring and recruiters usually are pretty, you know, dispensable and, and, and might lose their jobs because people might pull back a little bit, but there are people who are still going to continue to hire. So um, the opportunities are there. And, and I know personally from being in the room with the hiring manager before when we used to quote unquote, hold off on hiring. Uh, yeah, that was another way of saying, hey, don't post this externally. Um, but we still need these bodies in here. So um, there's other loopholes out there that HR works with, where works within that they can still pull the trigger and hire if the right candidate comes along. So remember, talent. If you're talented, they a lot of times and companies won't want to lose you because they know you can offer them value. So you have to be mindful and 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 kind of work 
the job hunting process uh, a little bit more creatively and, and find unique opportunities to kind of engage with hire managers or decision makers, uh, whether it's you know a recruiter or um, other managers that kind of lead you to the decision maker, and and find out a way to, to, to touch base and tickle them and give them the, your uh, uh, resume or your credentials and show them that you're a viable candidate, no matter the situation as an economy, as the company, or as you know the industry, whatever you're dealing with in terms of discrepancies that might be out there, um, you know, offset those because again, competition is doing these unique things. They're getting, they're finding ways to get hired, especially during uh, times like this. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And, you know, I think a lot of companies too, uh, really look for you know practical experience I know that a lot of times when you look at uh, you know jobs that are posted on job boards it'll say you know they want you to have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or these things but as an HR person or, or, or you know knowing HR people looking at that would you choose somebody that had 10 or 15 years of experience in a particular field but maybe didn't have their bachelor's degree versus a person that had one or two years of experience and had a bachelor's degree because I know a, a lot of people in that space, you know, they they get afraid to, you know, maybe apply for a job because they don't have that bachelor's degree, but they are a talented person and they have a bunch of experience. Um, so what are you seeing in the realm of HR when it comes to that particular scenario? Sure, that's a great question. And it's funny, uh, there's, uh, at first I should lead off saying there's no one all answer with, for this because every hiring room is different um, depending on the company their mandates because I remember I used to work at Johnson Controls we used to uh, recruit HVAC mechanics well they're in vans all day so I had to hire only mechanics that had a bachelor's or above and and, and not to mention they had to be union so it was a kind of a uh, another you know kind of needle in the haystack find out there but um, yeah depending on the hiring room because again they are responsible for vans they're responsible for insurance so therefore the insurance would not put a mechanic in the van without certain credentials having been met so i could not like legally hire these people because they didn't have a bachelor's now having said that some of these jobs they say that it's mandatory they might say it's preferred um either way if you think you've got a shot at it definitely make it known in your application you know submit but make it known that, hey, you know, I have this these wonderful years and look at the last five years I've been doing exactly this type of role at the competitor site or, or wherever, you know, show them how you transfer into that role without the, you know, w- you know, with the lack of credentials, show them how you transfer in with your experience and how you can add value to that bottom line to their, to and, and why they have that pain point of having that open and uh, opening, how do you resolve that? Again, any type of statement, um, you know, that I'm going to make throughout today is going to be add value to the hiring manager, not your accomplishments and tasks. Accomplishments are a great step. That's like the middle ground. That's like better than the tasks on your resume, but you need to show them that you have the value. They have a pain. They have an opening. It's four o'clock on a Friday and they got to find someone soon. And so now they have to stop what they're doing to go and research through resumes and find the right candidate. If you are someone who's seasoned, who may not have the degree, but you know, you can fill their pain point they're going to honestly try to at least get you in for an interview and maybe work with HR to hire you on if you're the right fit. So don't be deterred by those mandates on those um, applications. Now, having said that, you should be one and done with a company uh, within a a frame of a few months because you don't want to over apply. So it's a one and done. Find the right job that you absolutely love at the targeted company you like and submit to it and wait. Don't, I mean, wait, be a little proactive. You can always reach out in a few weeks, maybe tickle them if you have a, a contact information there or whatnot, but don't apply the next day and then the next day and then the next day over 50 different titles just to get in with them. The recruiters will blacklist you. They see this. They, they all have a radar and they all know who the heck's applying all the time and they do get annoyed. So, I mean, they're humans. So be that in mind too. So make sure um, if you don't have the right degree, but the job looks like something you could transfer into, and it's at a company you really like, make sure you pick that job as the right one because, again, you don't want to over-apply either. Yeah, when you say over-apply, are you kind of men- mentioning that as over-applying to the same company? Um, but yes. may- maybe you find uh, a job that uh, that you really like and maybe there's four or five different companies hiring for a similar job. You, By all means, you should be ap- applying to all of those, correct? Yes, yes, because they're all different companies. Now, if you're using a recruiter, and they uh, they are submitting you to company A, and then you go and uh, you know two days later you see company A is broadcasting it online. 
you don't necessarily have to apply because you have that recruiter working for you already directly with the hiring manager. Also having said that, don't pit recruiters against each other. Don't go to another recruiter and have them submit to you that, to that job A. And then another thing, you know, so again, if you are applying to a certain role of, across many different companies, go for it. Each of those companies need to have you your resume in their system to see if you're a viable candidate. Just be mindful though, if you've already been submitted, you know, you got to kind of mind your P's and Q's with the recruiting help you might get, or, you know, mind your actual submission, track down who you submitted to, what job, the requisition number, be as specific as possible. So you can go back and, and kind of double check and make sure you're not quote unquote annoying them. <laughs> yeah. You know, Matt, one of my pet peeves, right? I'm the, I'm the VP of operations here at uh, voice America on top of doing this radio show. And so I am responsible for hiring people in the technology portion of the business and, you know, audio engineering, video editing, those types of things. And, um, you know, one of the things that really drives me nuts is when I put out an ad for a job and I specifically say, um, you know, send your resume and contact information to a specific email address and that person who is looking for a job sends an email and says hi my name is Joe I'm very interested in the job please let me know what I need to do to submit information to you oh and I'm that, like that, I'm like did you not read the ad <laughs> oh, yeah. oh that that should be literally pasted on every job new job seekers door is Follow the directions. I mean, this can go in any sort of industry, no matter what. I mean, I do moonlighting as act. I act act once in a while, you know, if I'm lucky enough. And the casting directors will tell you if you don't follow directions, you're automatically disqualified purely based yeah. off the notion that you are just someone who can't follow directions. So yeah, it's almost like a first uh, barrier. And yeah, I cannot tell you how many times a, a candidate that was very viable lost out because the hire manager just doesn't think that they are meticulous enough to read through the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, especially, if I get one of those, those things get deleted immediately. I don't even follow up. I don't reply and give them the opportunity to rectify themselves. Um, for me, I mean, I don't I don't have time to mess around with somebody who didn't even take the time to, you know, digest the information that was given to them and and, and apply appropriately. Now, there, there's one thing I will forgive, right? If I put something in there and it says, put in a cover letter in your resume and you send a resume and not a cover letter, I'm not gonna be so upset because at least you sent your resume, um, you know, but how, how much the sticklers are HR departments for, um, you know, that cover letter when they're requesting it in, in the, uh, in the job posting? Yeah. I mean, again, th the cover letters is, this is that whole 50% game, 50% of the hiring managers read them. And out of those 50%, you know, out of the, the ones that do read them, a majority of them will mandate it. So I have seen hiring managers that decide to decline a, a candidate because they didn't have a cover letter because they somehow, you know, some of these people might use that as a, a as a decision making tool to see how well you complete your thoughts and how well you can articulate yourself with also having a little bit of personality. Because remember, your cover letter is your only spot where you're going to use personal pronouns and use kind of more soft skills and really speak to you as a person and a professional rather than the resume where it's just professional. So, you know, I, I, as a former recruiter, I'm like, I'm like you, I never read the cover letter. I went right to the experience. What have you been doing? Can you fit into this role and moving on right, to see right. if the next person fits? So I'm with you on that, but it depends on how fast paced you might be as a recruiter. It might depend on how quick these jobs need to be filled. It might depend on your culture at your, com at your company. Maybe they have a six month hiring thing where it takes forever to get through to them and, and into the actual door. So maybe you have more time to recruit, but, um, I don't know because as far as, you know, if it's going to hinder you or not, I th again, I think that might just be case by case. But here's what I always say is don't forget the cover letter because it's one of those tools in the kit that you need to have and you play the game. And so what the heck's the point of not, you know, taking a half hour to drum up some nice half page dialogue about how great you are for this role and then send it off with it? Because even if they don't read it, at least you played the game right and you're not being declined because of that little slip up. Are you having trouble finding hand sanitizer? Well, Spa Treat has you covered. There's no need to go searching high and low. Just visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and place your order on their easy to use website. On schedule delivery.
One of the great things about this product, Spa Treat Fulfillment Team is working around the clock to provide people hand sanitizer during this time of need and get your order to you as quickly as possible, even faster than Amazon. Spa Treat also has the lowest price of any of its competitors. Spa Treat has 62% alcohol content and the FDA recommends between 60 to 80 for maximum protection. This one has 62 because it doesn't dry your hands out. I use this stuff every single day. It is fantastic. It's got certified organic extracts with the ingredients in that hand sanitizer that are of the highest quality and they're designed to leave your hands smelling and feeling fresh while protecting you at the same time. The best part, there's no tricky residue left over. None. None of that sticky stuff. Four cents available, unscented, tea tree, lavender, and lemon. And best of all, this product right here is made in the good old United States of America. A lot of companies are having trouble dealing with the current demands, so Spa Treat has dedicated themselves to providing a much-needed product in the time of crisis. Spa Treat has better prices, faster shipping, and a larger supply than any of their competition. There isn't even a close second. Visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and enter promo code SPA SPA at checkout to receive 5% off your entire order. That's right. Not only are they offering the lowest price available, but they're also offering our listeners a discount. This promo code is exclusive to Voice America and only our listeners get this discount. Spa Tree and Voice America came together on this sponsorship in order to provide Americans something they could really need right now. Peace of mind. Visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and order yours today. That's SpaTreatOfficial.com and make sure you use the promo code SPA at checkout to receive 5% off your entire order. SpaTreeOfficial.com. Get your awesome hand sanitizer. You know, and, and what are companies actually looking for HR and hiring managers when they're looking at a resume? You know, I'll give you an example. I, I've been at Voice America for uh, 16 years. So if I was to put together my resume, right, I would say, you know, seasoned uh, manager, uh, veteran with 16 years of experience managing human uh, potential, right? I always call it human potential. Um, and then I, I would I would put something in like, you know, I was able to save the company X amount of dollars by doing A, B, C, and D. Um, I have uh, proficiencies in these types of softwares um, you know is that kind of the information that they're looking for or do they want to know more about you as a person or more about um, how you can help their company yeah great great job also kind of summarizing what the resume should be like I like the accomplishments with metrics some nice skills some buzzwords with the tech side although drop seasoned we use accomplished now we like accomplished better um, but uh, uh, yeah I would say you know, um, the, 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 the HR team wants someone that's going to make them some money or not lose them money at least, right? So like right now this whole, and, and this is pre-COVID, I, I'm not sure how things are going to be once we're out of this. And, and because I think a lot of shifts are going to be made with the hiring and the cultures and that kind of thing. But let's say, you know, back in November, um, it's do you cost the money or do you make the money? Are you going to bring value to the team and reduce waste or streamline efficiencies or or, um, uh, you know, um, say salvage fledgling client relationships or build revenue. You know, these are all these kind of business quantifiers, we call them. Not necessarily having to have a metric. You know, if you're someone who's not um, in, a, in a line of work that requires percentages and values and that stuff, doesn't mean you can't quantify your sentence, right? So you can still make it where it sounds like you're having this impact to the bottom line and that your mentality is towards that that idea that idea of hey i'm going to make you some money or i'm going to save you some money company hire me so i think as a hire manager and as a former recruiter you know that's what i always want to do is find someone who's you know that kind of like a glove fit and and if you're not you kind of start going down from there if it's not someone who's working at the competitor doing this type of role next in line maybe we have someone who's been doing this type of role in the industry just at a smaller firm or maybe someone who's been doing this role not in the industry but at a large firm you know so they kind of start going down the list of like how well can you fit into this position and that's kind of the mentality you should have going in to the room with your resume saying I am so amazing at what I've been doing just listen to these narratives I'm going to tell you about all these success stories that really really resonate and directly relate to your open requisition and so this is the kind of stuff you got to keep in mind is you know, they're busy people. They don't want to know that you love scuba diving and you went to Thailand last year with your wife. Like, that's great stuff for maybe like once you get in the door, but you know, when you start building your name, but like up front, 
don't get cozy, don't get personable, keep it professional, relate your, your information towards their pain points and how you can add value and resolve their issues. And don't repeat yourself or be redundant, whether it's the interview or the resume. No one cares about this project that you love and they hear it six times during an interview. You got to have six different projects to talk about. So, yeah. um, and I can get into some specific formatting also with the resume stuff, uh, you know, whenever you want. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love your quick summary. Uh, bottom line impact type statements, r- buzzwords that relate to your industry, to your role, and to the technical stuff you've been doing in that role. Um, and, you know, so that the recruiters can find you. Um, that's how they find you out of the pool of a thousand candidates. They use these little buzzwords or keywords, we call them, uh, in their applicant tracking systems. And, um, and uh, yeah, and have a nice format. Keep it pragmatic. If you keep it logical and you aren't crinkling the foreheads of the readers, you're halfway there. Now it's a matter if you're a fit and that will get you the interview then. Yeah. And I think then you, 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 you know, kind of are going fishing, right? Your resume is your bait. Uh, you, you drop that in the, in the pool of jobs and, you know, hopefully when, when somebody bites and you get that interview. Um, but I think there's some inherent things that are important as part of the interview process as well that, uh, people need to know about. I'll give you an example from, from my standpoint. I always like to ask people because our business is customer facing. Um, and so, you could be the the best at uh, technology, the best video editor, the best audio editor on the planet. But if you can't talk to a person, um, then that really makes a problem for us. And so one of the things I like to do when I'm doing interviews is I will ask a person to to tell me about a scenario where they were dealing with um, a customer that was hard to deal with, explain the situation, and then how did you handle that? Um, And then kind of sit back and listen to what they have to say. And a lot of times, um, by the length of the amount of information that they're giving, I can generally pick out whether they're lying or not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's great. And I, I love those kind of behavioral questions where you're wondering scenarios and, and you get all sorts of answers. And you know what? You're right. Don't let them ramble. And, and anyone listening, remember that less is more. Keep it poignant, succinct, and, and, and end it with a high note and move on. No one wants a minute and a half answer. <laughs> So, you know, there's a lot of uh, job opportunities that are going to be coming up and, you know, or a lot of people that don't have jobs right now. Um, How do job seekers find these opportunities during the global crisis? What are some tools for them, uh, you know, for the person sitting at home that got furloughed and is like, I want to go back to work now? Sure. Yeah. And that's, you know, there's plenty of tools, especially in this digital age. I mean, it's amazing how much uh, stream, how much more streamlined that uh, the actual hiring processes and the recruitment process. So first and foremost, th- you should be thankful as, as someone who is actually job seeking now versus 1970, where you had to walk in each door and hold them a resume and try, you know, so at least you have that to your advantage, but at the same time, you're unemployed or you want to do a career shift. So let's get to work. You know, no one cares outside of your, your, your family and your friends about what what you do unless they know you and they can they can implement you into their into their business so remember that no one owes you anything and that's why i hate to say it so bluntly but you, you got to keep in mind that everyone's busy everyone has things that they're trying to balance they can't be always vouching for someone they don't know and and or even someone they might know but this might not have a fit for so you got to remember that like even people in Hollywood that are super famous have kids and you don't see them ever and they never get famous because even if you're Spielberg's kid, it doesn't mean he's going to give you a, a starring role and everything. So, I mean, you got to think in terms of you got to prove yourself. So, you know, dust yourself off, get back in the line of work and start implementing tools that can get you streamlined uh, interviews and, and cut your lead times between interviews. So uh, the biggest tool, first and foremost, I think is your resume and it's your, it's your sales point. Uh, it, it's kind of your marketing, your, you, the product that is you. And so have a professional resume done. Um, second, get the LinkedIn matched up with it. Obviously everyone's like, Oh, LinkedIn, everyone wants the latest and greatest cool thing. Sometimes people forget that where everyone hangs out in sometimes is also a very good thing. So LinkedIn, there's, there's, billions of people, millions and whatever, billion people on there. So obviously if decision makers are there, don't you want to be in front of them? Well, yeah. So get on LinkedIn, emulate your resume to the LinkedIn. So that way your messaging is consistent. I'm a big believer of that. Uh, you'll hear various, ver- you'll hear variations of this, but again, I don't want 
a hiring manager finding you on LinkedIn and then a recruiter finding you uh, uh, with your resume and then they, they match them up and you don't look like the same person. So, uh, and then outside of LinkedIn, use Indeed to your advantage. These are all kind of the high, these are all kind of like the the, the uh, visible ones everyone knows about, but again, everyone's there, so use them. Uh, Indeed, uh, and your biggest thing on Indeed outside of uploading your resume is going to be setting up job alerts because obviously you want to get in to the applicant tracking system quicker than the next person so make sure you set up alerts. Now, having said that, that's all the fine and dandy stuff, okay? You can do those things uh, and have that control. The next thing, now you gotta start kind of thinking outside the box. Well, the first thing I always do, and this is again, uh, a lot of people will you know have their opinions, but I always like to apply to each of your targeted companies, okay? So let's pick five targeted companies, apply on their portals, that way you're into their applicant tracking system so their recruiters can use your information to possibly place you. Next, take those same five targeted companies and go on LinkedIn and search the decision makers that might affect you. So whether it's a recruiter, an HR member, um, that isn't, you know, maybe someone that's that's kind of on the on the, the mid-level. Um, I wouldn't really necessarily target, H, target human resource directors and that kind of thing, but maybe like an HR generalist or maybe an HR assistant, um, a sourcer, um, but definitely recruiters. And then target some of the people within the department that you will be working in at this targeted company. And try to find a virtual cup of coffee, if you will, a way to get a referral to maybe a decision maker that is in that same company. So you go to this, let's say this this, this uh, accountant, and you say, hey, I'm trying to get a role as a bookkeeper. And uh, and obviously I'm just kind of sh- shooting from the hip, but make your message pleasant. Um, quick and to the point, but also offer a little incentive. Maybe you buy them a virtual cup of coffee or, you know, and there's ways to get creative with that, but, um, you know, send them five bucks on Amazon or something and say, hey, just want to pick your brain for 10 minutes if you don't mind. And then let them know you're interested in this bookkeeper role. And maybe that accountant can pass you along to the finance manager who's hiring for bookkeepers or whoever in that department. And so that's kind of a, a way to kind of, um, uh, you know, use a back door, we call it. But the, the, the key points to remembering that is you, you got to know how to search LinkedIn. And there's so many tools out there and, and webcasts and that kind of thing to show you. I mean, there's you could type it in on Google and probably find 20 videos about how to use LinkedIn to search uh, for, for targeted names. Um, and then you got to have a good elevator pitch for that initial person. You got to make sure that you're not wasting their time and you try to get them into that virtual cup of coffee. After you do that, send them a handwritten thank you note. Don't, don't do a, a digital. Send them, find their address or send it to the company, a, a, a t- attention to them and send them a, a thank you note. It's amazing this handwritten kind of thing is gone now, but when people get mail, they get real excited and they open it. So I couldn't tell you how many times as a recruiter I would actually open resumes because I never got mail. So it was something to do for five minutes. Um, and then follow up with your connection that they give you with the resume and cover letter and here's where your next pitch will come in. This is the one where you're trying to get them to open your resume and see if you're a viable candidate. And again, I have numerous tools available for this actual messaging part, um, but and there's stuff online too, but that's that's the only trick is you gotta be, be savvy with how you approach these people when you're cold messaging them. Um, and then do it again, targeted company number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. Get into their radar without having to go through the applicant tracking system way. Although I still would do that way, but try to be creative. And that's just one of the ways that you can use LinkedIn for that. Oh, wow. Such great and wonderful, valuable tools, Matthew. We appreciate it. Um, So while we wrap up the interview today, tell people where they can find out more about you and uh, uh, hire you for helping them manage their career transition. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. If you go to jobstickers.com, that's job stickers. It's kind of like pot stickers. Um, that's my blog and that it also is within my website. So when you get there, you'll see all my information, contact, all that kind of stuff. And I just want to end with, remember my two big points that the, the recruiters, they recruit the candidate, not the requisition, not their opening. They recruit the candidate, the good ones do. So remember, even if there's no job openings, a recruiter will value, if they see value in you, they will want to work with you somehow. So. Uh, That and also keep it pragmatic. No matter what you do, if you think this is kind of illogical or might be extreme or something that might be weird, then just don't do it. A picture on a resume, don't do it because, you know, the two people that might get turned off might have been the ones hiring you. So just keep your keep your job hunt and everything you do within it logical. And and remember, recruiters need you also. So find them, get in front of them. 
Awesome. Thank you, guys. Pre- appreciate that very much, Matthew. Everybody, Thank thanks for listening to this uh, special mini-sode of Finding Your Frequency right here on the Voice America Talk Radio Network. And for all of you out there that are job hunting and seeking, make sure you go uh, contact Matthew and he can help you guys uh, craft your resume properly and get the proper messaging out so you can go find that job of your dreams or uh, go and get back to work after this COVID stuff is going on. Uh, one thing I want to just remind everybody, it takes a little intestinal fortitude sometimes. You just got to get out there and get the work done. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more Finding Your Frequency right here on Voice America Live Internet Talk Radio.